how you see the photos. Just you're going through the canals, you're seeing all the beautiful stores, the cafes, just the tourists, even just the Italian flag, just seeing all of it in person. It's just, it's really surreal. <laughs> like I can't believe I'm actually here. It's Sunday and we're headed to Mass. And I'm just so glad because at least we're going to get to see a lot of Venice today. right after the mask closed they closed the lights it's actually a lot of gold tiny mosaics all together on the ceilings in the walls and when the lights are on it illuminates them it is it's stunning absolutely stunning I must admit what it can get overwhelming but the most important thing is you know you really got to watch your belongings because there are a lot of pickpockets. You know, when a place is like so busy, so cramped, perfect place to spot people who are so involved in their selfies and the scenery, and then boom, you lose your shit. Literally and figuratively. Speaking of, I've got to find my family. <laughs> so I found out that this hat that I'm wearing is actually, uh, well, it's a bigger version of a gondolier hat, a traditional one. And it comes in three different sizes as per the seller. It, it's about 15 euros, but I got mine in Croatia. what it's like to actually book a hotel in this area because look at that guy lugging all that luggage it can be quite difficult it's kind of like going to those old towns in Europe where everything is pedestrian cars are not allowed so you're gonna have to be carrying your luggage around versus staying outside the city or outside the wall or here out outside you get it <laughs> As much as Venice is so nice, you're bound to find a lot of graffiti. I guess it's part of art in the wall. I bet my life that a Filipino made this. Tanga boys. <laughs> and for you, for those of you who don't know what tanga means, basically stupid, tonta, idiot, colorks, huh? ano pa? Bo, bo, ano? Bo tu? It's bo square. Or bo square. <laughs> So mom and dad always taught me that Italian leather is one of the best in the world. So when in Italy, I see those shoes. Look at those boots. They're so pretty. They used to be $2.95. It's now $1.99 euro. Let's see if they have my size. They had my size. I couldn't help it. Yay! Bought me a pair of boots. 
So I've been walking everywhere and I see this Nina and friends and they're like giving so many free samples. It's chocolate and I know I shouldn't be having but you know it's a free sample. We can try. <laughs> Couldn't resist, had to try. <laughs> Only one bite, but my god, that was so good. Look at all that chocolate dripping in the back. <laughs> okay, so this is their best seller. Hello! Hi! <laughs> so we'll try this. Honestly, guys, this is my second try and it's so good. It's called Papam. It's either hazelnut or pistachio. I'm not big on pistachio, but hazelnut is a winner. This is the moral of the story. Never get free samples because this is what happens. <laughs> And the thing is, they were even offering me more. They're like, do you want some more? Do you want some more? And you're like, I can't, but thank you. No, the guys, these are presents. Honestly, they're not for me. No, for real, for real, guys. The free samples for me, but these ones are presents. <laughs> Head underwater, falling back into you. I thought we'd be smarter. I got nothing left to lose. You said you fall with me. No matter if I go, study pain under through the canal you can take a bus like a water bus so it is uh, it's packed but I'm guessing it's the cheapest form of transportation along the canal and then you have your water taxi which is what I rode earlier that was expensive for five 70 euros to church it was like a seven minute ride it's really expensive but a gondola, I'm so sure that's even way more expensive because it's kind of like, you know, when you're a tourist, you're in Thailand, a tuk-tuk, expensive. Perhaps, maybe in the Philippines as well, you ride a kalesa, maybe it's going to be expensive too. You know, all these things are novelty or what is very local and what is very popular. Expect to pay your tourist prices. back into your swim a little deeper, I don't need to breathe. One of the hardest things to do in Italy, in the land of pasta and pizza, is not eat it. Aww. Just, you know, to keep my sanity, I'll have a bite of chocolate, some bread, but then, you know, gotta stay the course of having a salad amidst all the pasta and calamari that I'm seeing. Gotta stay strong. Casanova. Basically, every time you tell a guy, wow, that guy is such a Casanova, basically he's a player. He knows the game. And that's his house. So the explorer Marco Polo and this is his house. So this is yeah I guess a dream come true. Always wanted to ride a gondola and I can't believe that it's finally happening. <laughs> Just like every other tourist. You know I know a lot of you guys may have been to Venice already and you're thinking oh my god been there done that. Well you know what we're always whoa we are always a tourist somewhere somehow. No matter where you've been, 
and the whole point is not really to what place you've been but it's the feeling that you get of a new place of the gratefulness of that newfound feeling that you are just part of the whole world and you haven't seen everything just yet all right, it's the end of the day. It's almost 8 p.m. and we are walking to the train station. Now, you can take a water taxi from the train station, Piazza del Marco, did I get that right? Or Rialto, or as I'm finding out right now, you can actually walk a very long, long, long way. <laughs> it can be done though, it saves you money. Not necessarily time, but it will save you a lot of money. Um. <laughs> we made it! <laughs> I think that was about, I don't know, a 20, 25 minute walk, which isn't really so bad. It's just because you're not really sure where you're going. It seems like it's longer. And there is the train station. Ciao, ciao, Venezia, Venezia. <laughs>